Hey guys, it's Ryan. Um, in this group of videos, we're going to talk about static and dynamic occlusion. And so we're going to start with static occlusion, basically when the jaw is closed and not moving. And we'll focus on occlusal contacts. So this is a tricky concept. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. I think the best thing you can do is using a deniform and being able to manipulate it in your hands is, is really the best way to learn this kind of stuff. But I'm going to do my best to help you show you guys some drawings and shortcuts that I think will really help out. So there are three planes that we operate in. Uh, the coronal, or the straight on front or back view, the sagittal side view, and the axial or sort of aerial view. And I have these easy drawings that you can memorize and reproduce for exams for each one of these three planes. So we'll go over these um, throughout the video. So this is an image I actually got from one of my other videos, uh, but it's a great place to start. Um, I sort of think of it like you're riding in a magic school bus, you go inside your mouth, and you sit kind of at the back of your tongue facing forward. So this is the left side of your mouth, I'm looking at like a cross section of the molars, and this is the right side of your mouth. And um, if we kind of overlay this more anatomically correct version, you can see your tongue's in the center and your cheeks on the outside, with your upper teeth just overlapping the lower teeth slightly. And we'll come back to this in a lot more detail later on. So if you notice, this is really the ideal overlap, where the maxillary teeth are displaced about half a cusp out to the buckle. So there's this beautiful puzzle piece configuration. So we're going to zoom in on the left side, and this is what I call the Twin Peaks drawing. So this is our first drawing from the coronal view, and basically you have these zigzags showing the overlapping cusps we just talked about. So when you bite down and these teeth come together in the ideal occlusion, the lingual cusps of the upper teeth and the buccal cusps of the lower teeth are what contact the or what contact in this sort of static occlusion scenario and these are called the functioning cusps so and keep in mind I use buccal and facial interchangeably and so um, this is a sort of the uh, standard the really good thing to sort of lock in your brain for the rest of um, thinking about occlusion and so I think of it like lingual of uppers and buckle of lowers, Dr. Lou Bull. And he is completely made up. Um, I just totally made this up. But if it helps you remember, um, then that's awesome. You could also go with palatal of the uppers, and that would be poo bowl, but uh, whatever works for you, then just however you can remember it, that works for you. So these are basically referring to the centric stops. Um, and that's where the functioning cusps are contacting the opposing teeth in static occlusion. And this is basically just a more anatomically correct version of that, um, where the red points um, are referring to the centric stops. And just like as a, as a reference, the functioning cusps tend to be a little bit more blunter and centered over the opposite tooth. They can also be called the supporting cusps, or the holding cusps, and these contact points, um, like I said, are sometimes called the centric stops. Um, so that means the other cusp we didn't talk about, the buccal of the uppers and the lingual of the lowers, sometimes referred to as the bull rule, um, they're kind of hanging over the opposite teeth, and they're called the non-functioning or the non-supporting or the non-holding cusps. All right, so let's jump into our uh, second picture here. and. I have to give credit where credit is due. This is actually from Past the Dental Boards. Um, his YouTube channel is awesome. Go check him out. But I sort of adapted this so we can talk about it in a little bit different way. So you start by drawing um, nine vertical lines on top. And then you draw this zigzag pattern. And then you uh, draw nine more vertical lines on the bottom. And basically what you have here is you have all these teeth represented with all the cusps and it sort of mimics what you'd see from like a right, or I guess a left, depending on how you look at it, sagittal view of the mouth. And so we can fill in 
what all of the teeth here are represented. So you have the three molars, two premolars, canine, and the two incisors. And you can see how everything on the bottom sort of offset half a cusp to the mesial, which is how it should be in an ideal occlusion. And one thing I want to point out is this line here is sort of offset, and that's to include the pesky distal cusp of the mandibular first molar. And then we also want to remember our Dr. Lou Bowl, the lingual of the uppers and the buccal of the lowers, is what's going to be doing the contacting here. So if someone asked us what's contacting in the central fossa of the mandibular first molar, so we could kind of go right to here and we'd see, oh, it's the mesial lingual cusp of the maxillary first molar that's contacting right there. If someone asked us what contacts the distal marginal ridge of the mandibular first premolar, we'd say, well, here's the distal marginal ridge of the mandibular first premolar, and then it would be the lingual cusp of the maxillary first premolar is contacting right there. So now one thing to note is this might vary from school to school, but the lingual cusps of the upper premolars usually contact in the distal triangular fossa of the lower premolar. So this kind of cusp would be offset a little bit this way. This cusp would be offset a little bit this way, but that totally depends. Depends whether they're teaching a tooth to two tooth or a tooth to one tooth occlusion. So you can kind of keep that in mind, but for all intents and purposes, this is a really, really awesome thing to use, whether for your exams in dental anatomy, for the national board exam, this is like your go-to, just reproduce this on every uh, paper and uh, have this ready to go in your arsenal because this will really help you pinpoint where things are uh, contacting. So what we can do is you go ahead and we'll um, have this up here. And you can go ahead and practice these examples. You can pause the video, and then we'll go over them in just a little bit. All righty, so here are the answers. Um, so hopefully this matches up with what you got. And you can notice, this is sort of a shortcut here, but you can notice that all of the numbers, 20 and 13, 19 and 14, and 3 and 30, they all add up to 33. Um, it's a nice shortcut, not always true, but it is a nice kind of quick way if like a professor called on you and you had to answer, you know, what includes with number 19, you could add it up quick in your head and say 14. Um, but again, nine times out of 10, that is the case, but not always. Alrighty, and this is where we're going to stop the first video. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, for the next video, we're going to talk more about dynamic occlusion. So we're going to take this one step further. We're going to uh, first figure out where a cusp contacts, and then we're going to see where that cusp moves depending on where the mandible moves. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.